Hi, I'm Irene and this is Inkworks. Today is an ink swatching day. Diamine brand inks, in bottles only to be precise. Sample vial inks will be in a different video at a later date. I will talk about what's going on here and indulge in some story time stuff, but first I want to explain the look and feel of this footage. I've recently assigned activity spaces in the studio, so painting projects take place on the drawing slash drafting table, while pen, ink, and stationary stuff happens here at the writing desk. <laughs> They're only separated by a rolling art cart, but it does mean repositioning the camera and lighting equipment. Anyway, I wanted to experiment a bit, so I placed a sheet of parchment paper over one of the light panels to soften the brightness. I think it lends an interesting nostalgic feel, and I'm kind of kicking myself for not donning fingerless gloves for that Dickensian vibe. There was some concern over whether the ink colors would show true or not, but after reviewing the footage multiple times, I really don't think any of the inks are misrepresented. There is an upcoming video where I swatched my Hiroshizuku bottled inks that was done on the same day as this session, thus it will have the same look. But going forward, I likely won't bother to apply this sort of practical filter again. Although I'm a fan of the vintage aesthetic, I have no intention of turning this into a all-vintage-all-the-time channel. So go ahead, be honest, and say love it, hate it, or couldn't care less. The paper is from Tomoe River. I believe it's the 68 GSM Sanzen version. I took some loose sheets and cut them down using an old guillotine paper trimmer. Then, using a kakimori brass nib and a watercolor brush, I provided both writing and stroking samples for all 15 of my bottled diamine inks. By the way, those are all 30 milliliter size. Diamine offers their inks in an 80 milliliter glass bottle as well. At some point, I'd like to get a full-sized glass bottle for at least one of my favorites. Oxblood, for sure. Other accoutrements there are the orange votive candle holder to secure the bottle, and a small dish. Not sure if the dish is intended for condiments or as a chopstick stand. Either way, it worked fine for my inky purposes. The unused ink was poured back into the bottles, and the dish, like the nib, was rinsed between each color in a water bucket just out of frame. By the way, thank you to those who gave suggestions for Guillermo del Toro movies. Several viewers recommended The Shape of Water and Pinocchio, so they are now both on my movies to watch list. While watching the trailer for The Shape of Water, I saw that Sally Hawkins is in it. <laughs> I've seen her in other roles, most memorably in the movie Blue Jasmine, as Jasmine's adopted sister, Ginger. I'm making a point of saying the names because... Well, producer Mike and I share this thing where if we don't remember the actor's name, we can at least remember the role we first saw them in. I haven't seen Sally in a lot of movies, but I've seen the actor who played her boyfriend in Blue Jasmine. I've made a point to look up his name. It's Bobby Cannavale. But producer Mike and I will forever know him as Chili. Another actor uh, that we often forget the name is Danny Houston, who we first noticed in the movie The Constant Gardener. So whenever we see him, we're like, hey, it's Sandy in stereo, which can really take you out of a tense scene. 
like when, in Thirty Days of Night, he ripped out a guy's neck with his fangs. Hey, it's Sandy! I gotta tell you guys, the other day I had a moment, <laughs> in a good way. For years I've raved about Little Debbie's Pumpkin Delights, and earlier this month I discovered Hostess's Tasty Iced Pumpkin Cupcakes. Well, forget that, because I may have a new favorite fall treat. Costco's Caramel Apple Mini Cakes. My brother left a container on the dining table, and they were irresistible. Uh, for something called mini cakes, they sure look like a handful. Well, I pulled out one and placed it on a plate. Then I peeled off the paper liner and sliced it into eight wedges. Like a pie. You know, thinking I'd eat a few segments, then save the rest for later. Silly, silly me. I snarfed all eight slices in one sitting while washing it down with hot spice tea. And it was glorious. So I did a little Google snoople, and it looks like they are eight ninety nine for a package of six. Which may sound like a lot, but one is large enough to share with the buddy. Personally, I wouldn't, but there's got to be someone out there that would. I know there are lots of wonderful seasonal goodies out there, but unfortunately, there's no Trader Joe's close to us. Bummer. A good friend, however, brings a seasonal care package for me every autumn. Yay! And a couple of weeks ago, producer Mike managed a recent stop at Trader Joe's and picked up a jar of their Autumnal Harvest Creamy Pasta Sauce. It's a delightful blend of pumpkin, butternut squash, and carrots with a tomato base, selected herbs, and a bit of cream. It's absolutely delicious. We like to pour it over either cheese-filled tortellini or ravioli. Another favorite is the Fall Harvest Salsa, made with pumpkin, apples, butternut squash, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, etc. We like to have that with our favorite tortilla chips, Juanitas. Some people find Juanitas chips a little too oily or too delicate, but their texture and flavor makes them our chip of choice. FYI, and this is something I've only recently discovered, Juanitas is now apparently known as Juantonios outside of the Pacific Northwest. Sorry, can't tell you why. I'm just the messenger. In previous videos, I've mentioned the Artist and Craftsman Supply Store in downtown Tacoma, so I feel pretty lucky that in a relatively short drive, I can be surrounded by art supplies and people who will happily sell them to me. But it's never close enough, right? I can't be the only artist who wishes she lived next door to an art supply store, able to pop in at any time for a quick fix. I know I should just be grateful that the Artist and Craftsman Supply in Tacoma and the Blick Art Materials Store in Seattle are within a 45-minute drive. For a lot of people, having those options that close would be a dream come true. Speaking of dreams, wouldn't it be nice to actually have art shop dreams? To have the store all to yourself and take your time roaming the aisles where every brand and product line is on display. You can grab all the things you want and there are no signs saying, if you lick it, you buy it. Oh man, that sure would beat last night's dream where I got to the buffet too late and they were whisking the trays away from my grasping tongs. Then I was at my high school reunion, where I kept getting mistaken for someone named Mia. Yeah, it's been a two cups of coffee morning, I tell you. So I've mentioned multiple times that I watch only murders in the building. And I've also talked about my love of things from Victorian times. 
Well, knowing that, you might imagine the thrill I experienced when, during this current third season, they introduced a patter song as a story element. Because things don't get much more pattery than the very Victorian Gilbert and Sullivan comic operas. Whether it's John Wellington Wells hawking potions and spells, or Major General Stanley bigging up his qualifications, G&S were the patter masters. I'd actually hoped to catch last summer's production by the Seattle Gilbert and Sullivan Society, but sadly they weren't able to put on a show this year. It was especially disappointing, because it's been more than 20 years since I've seen one. So hearing Steve Martin pattering on about possibly perfidious Pickwick perps was positively pleasant. Not sure why, but every time I see Autumn Oak, I think of the phrase cottage core. Are people still saying that? Cottage core? For a while, it seemed to be all over the place. As best I could figure, the term core, used as a suffix, is simply a modern way of saying style or aesthetic. Because I've seen it tacked on to a lot of trends and genres and stuff. Have I got that right? Or am I woefully out of touch? I want to be hip! There are some steps that I cut out during the editing process simply to keep the runtime down and because I think they're kind of boring. <laughs> so not shown is the part where I applied clean water droplets onto each sample and dabbed them dry to show how much the color lifted from the paper. Also not shown is where I adhered the swatched papers to small pieces of cardstock so they'd fit nicely into clear protector sleeves. It might seem silly to go to all this trouble when there are ready-to-purchase swatch systems out there, such as the Color Ring and Wearing Goal swatch card sets. But this way saved me money, because these are all things I already had on hand. I'm happy to share this ink swatching session. There is another session for my Iroshizuku bottled inks. I want to get that up and then work on some gouache projects for October. That's the plan, anyway. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy art shopping dreams, and stay inky, my friends. <laughs>